While other actresses struggled for a glimpse of the spotlight, Kim Novak had it easily handed to her. But then, at the peak of her career, to the shock of everyone, she suddenly turned away from it all. Why? And why did Alfred Hitchcock treat her so badly while filming Vertigo? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. Years before she became Kim Novak, Marilyn Pauline Novak was born in Chicago, Illinois on February 13, 1933, as the second daughter of Joseph Novak and Blanche Crowell. Though her parents were also born in Chicago, they were both of Czech descent. Her father, Joseph, was a history teacher. However, when the Great Depression hit, he took a job as a freight train dispatcher to support the family. After going through William Penn Elementary School, Farragut High School, and Wright Junior College, Kim won not one, but two scholarships to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Even from a young age, she was interested in drama and saw that to be her logical next step. At the Institute, Kim was a fine student. However, she did not have the luxury of waiting to graduate before seeking opportunities in showbiz. And so, during her second year, she went on a cross-country tour as a promotional model for Detroit Motor Products. The company had a new deep freeze product and sought the help of beautiful young women in marketing it at trade shows. Due to her great beauty, Kim was selected as the head model. In addition, she was awarded the title of Miss Deep Freeze. When the tour was over, Kim had the option to return to school. However, this modeling campaign had given her lots of exposure, which she correctly identified as an opportunity. So along with a couple of other models, she decided to go to Los Angeles and see if she could break into the film industry. This was the early 50s, and Hollywood producers were still on the hunt for fresh talent. Because of her great beauty, Kim did not have any trouble at all appearing as an extra in a handful of movies. She did it first in Son of Sinbad, and then later in The French Line. These roles were far beneath her talent. However, she worked diligently at them. Eventually, a Hollywood agent discovered her, immediately signing her to a long-term deal at Columbia Pictures. The studio was on the hunt for the next it girl, and so far, Kim had marked all the checkboxes. The then president of Columbia, Harry Cohn, had big plans for Kim. Rita Hayworth, the studio's it girl in the 40s, was rapidly on the decline. To replace her, Cohn wanted someone fresh, and Kim was most definitely fresh. It was Cohn's hope that Kim would be a replacement for Rita, as well as a rival to Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn was raking in the cash for her bosses at 20th Century Fox, and Cohn wanted that for Kim too. There was just one problem with Cohn's plan though, Kim did not agree to it. For one, he wanted her to change her whole birth name, and Kim found his request to be offensive. Cohn explicitly stated that nobody is going to pay to watch a Polak, using an offensive term to hint at her Eastern European origins. However, Kim fought back, stating that she was proud of her name and her origins. As an upcoming actress, fighting with a major studio head was a very bold choice. If things had gone south, she could have been blacklisted from Hollywood forever. However, Kim stood her ground. Eventually, Cohn accepted a compromise. She would not be Kit Marlowe, as he had initially suggested. Instead, she would be Kim Novak, keeping her Eastern European last name. Kim's first couple of movies for Columbia, including the movies Pushover and Five Against the House, were middling successes. The studio had higher expectations of Kim as a box office draw and began to have second thoughts as to whether she had what it took to become a major star. However, in 1955, she starred in the movie Picnic alongside William Holden and Rosalind Russell. Even though Cohn had been ambivalent about casting her, director Joshua Logan did so anyway, and his gambit paid off. The movie was a resounding success, both commercially and critically. From here on out, Kim was officially a star. Between 1955 and 1958, she appeared in four more movies, and they were all hits. They were The Man with the Golden Arm, The Eddie Dushin Story, Jean Eagles, and Pal Joey. In two of these movies, she co-starred opposite Frank Sinatra and Rita Hayworth. Harry Cohn, president of Columbia, could not be happier. At last, Kim was fulfilling the potential he had seen in her the first time she stepped into his office. It didn't matter what she called herself. The year 1958 was a major one for Kim Novak. She was about to participate in a role that would change her career forever. Renowned director Alfred Hitchcock was preparing a movie titled Vertigo. He had even cast his favorite actress Vera Miles in the lead role. However, Vera, who had recently married, got pregnant and had to drop out. Annoyed, Hitchcock had to find a replacement, and he had to find one fast. He showed the script to Cohn, who thought it was trash. However, since Hitchcock was a celebrity director, Cohn showed the script to Kim Novak. 
Immediately, Kim fell for the role and wanted to participate. But to Cohn's surprise, she wasn't willing to do so at just any price. At the time, Kim was on a $1,250 a week contract, but she had grown to believe she was worth so much more to the studio. She asked for a raise, but Cohn refused to budge. As a matter of fact, he suspended her instead. Kim did not back down, firing all her agents and hiring new ones. After a second round of renegotiations, Cohn relented, giving her a $3,000 a week contract. When asked by the media about this whole episode, Kim said, I don't like to have anyone take advantage of me. From then, she was free to appear in Vertigo. Kim's experience working on Vertigo was a strange one. Hitchcock kept her at a distance the whole time. Even though she was excited about the role, Hitchcock did not indulge her much. Instead, brandishing his ego like a weapon, he imposed his creative choices upon her. Vertigo came out to middling reception. However, years later, it underwent a great re-evaluation. It is now regarded by many critics and film historians as the greatest film of all time. Even so, Kim's feelings towards it remain complicated. On one hand, she is proud of its status in culture and history. On the other hand, she just can't shake how she was treated by Hitchcock. It would take years for her to discover that he was disappointed he had Kim instead of Vera Miles. Even so, Kim was a huge part of why the movie is a success and has acquired such prestige. Post-Vertigo, Kim's career went on such a strange turn. Sure, she appeared in some hits such as Kiss Me, Stupid, and Belle, Book, and Candle. However, her output did not match that of the rivaling stars of the time. Fans and critics alike wondered what at all was going on with her. Even so, answers were scarce. Then, in 1966, while filming the occult-themed Mystery Eye of the Devil, Kim fell off a horse and got severely injured. Her time away from filming gave her lots of room to think, so much so that she decided she was never coming back to Hollywood. This was a most strange decision, as she was at the peak of her career and in the prime of her life. Why give it up now? Couldn't she keep it up for just a few more years? Well, right from the get-go, Kim did not fit into the Hollywood star system. The very moment Harry Cohn had asked her to change her name, she felt uncomfortable. As a Hollywood star, Kim's life was brutal. Aside from having to deal with draconian filming schedules, she had to use most of her free time appearing in balls and galas and many other events. So many Hollywood actresses had succumbed to the star system, including Marilyn Monroe, Kim's career rival. Her recent accident with the horse made Kim reevaluate her career. In the end, she decided she was done. So she moved away from Hollywood to the mountains of Big Sur. After leaving Hollywood, Kim's life opened up tremendously. Sure, she appeared in a couple of movies after that, but she was no longer contractually obligated to do so. She spent most of her time pursuing other hobbies. This included painting, singing, and songwriting. As a matter of fact, Harry Belafonte and the Kingston Trio recorded some of her folk songs in the 60s. Today, Kim is 90 years old. You would think as one of the few surviving Golden Age actresses, she is much appreciated by the public. However, this isn't quite true. In 2014, when she made a rare public appearance at the 86th Academy Awards, she was harshly criticized for her appearance. In fact, Donald Trump went so far as to state she should sue her plastic surgeon. Kim was very shaken by these attacks. However, ever the lady, she handled them all with grace. After standing up to the bullies with an open letter, she once again retreated from the public eye. These days, she spends the rest of her golden years in peace and in obscurity. To some, Kim Novak's career path will always remain baffling, but to most, she will stand as a shining example of what it means to stand up for yourself, fight back, and put your health and your interests first. Immortalized on celluloid, she will always be mysterious, beautiful, and powerful. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click enjoy and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.